Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Everything that I can tell you about RAM and why you actually need a lot of it. All right, the more the merrier. Let's talk about this. So I'm sure by now a lot of you have watched all the beer channel uh, or beer commercial tech channels. Basically what I say in this analogy is these are channels that say, hey look, I got a MacBook Air with 8 gigs of RAM. Look at all the programs I can run and see my activity monitor. I still got over a gig of RAM left. Look at that, that's amazing. 8 gigs is just fine, you'll be okay. All right, now, problem is they didn't show you actually doing anything productive in those programs. They fire them up because a lot of programs out there on the market that we use every day, whether they come with our computer or otherwise, they, well, they, they don't need a whole lot of RAM to actually fire up some of these programs, okay? So yeah, it doesn't amount to a whole lot, but it's when you start doing stuff. Now there are video editor programs, for example, that actually do require 16 gigabytes of RAM to really actually even fire up. Now, where are they gonna get this RAM if you don't have it? They get it from swap, from your SSD drive. They use a section of your hard drive or SSD drive as what's called virtual memory or swap. So what virtual memory or swap is, is it is a section of your drive that is converted into RAM like this, except of course much slower than your RAM is, obviously. Okay, even the fastest SSDs on the market are not as fast as RAM is. So RAM is the fastest, okay? so. When that happens, yes, the program will still fire up, but then at least you know, if you have a program that wants 16 gigs of RAM and you don't have that available RAM, and I say available RAM, you can fire up your activity monitor and notice that you're in a swap for quite a bit of RAM there. It's not only sucked up any remaining RAM that your OS didn't use, okay, it also sucks up the rest of it to get the damn thing to fire up. You still haven't even dropped a program into it yet. Are you getting the idea of the beer commercial tech channels yet? They fire up a pile of programs. iMovie, Logic, GarageBand, QuickTime, even Chrome, okay, or Safari. These programs even compiled all together just firing them up. Does not use up a lot of RAM, okay? So when you think about it that way, it's kind of like, huh, well, that's amazing. I can do a lot of things at once. No, you can't. <laughs> no, 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 you can't because all you've done is fired up these programs that don't require much RAM to actually launch. You haven't even done nothing yet. And when you start doing stuff, that's when things start getting nasty for you. So what about um, specifications for a game that says the game needs 16 gigs of RAM? Well, I've got 16 gigs of RAM. No, you don't. You don't have 16 gigs of RAM. Your computer has 16 gigs of RAM. But whatever's left over after the OS is done with it, that's what you have. You don't have 16 gigs of RAM for the game. Because every time you launch even one app, whatever your computer uses for RAM, you don't get it back. You add to it. Okay? Whether it's a Mac or a Windows computer. Hell, even Linux, Unix. Okay, same thing. It never releases the RAM, okay, to you. It has to keep that RAM so it keeps the OS online and then your programs have to go up and run, etc. Okay, now, by default with a Mac and a Windows computer, okay, you have virtual memory turned on by default, okay? Now, on a Windows computer, you can turn off virtual memory or swap if you have enough hardware RAM that's going to allow you to safely do that. Otherwise, it does warn you, you could crash, you could have a freeze. Stuff's gonna go wrong. On a Mac, we don't have that option anymore. Now under OS 9, yes, we did. Not only could we do virtual memory on and off at our option, we could also create what's called a RAM drive, okay, which is actually quite fun. It uses your RAM, creates a drive, and then you could actually copy your program direct in that way like the whole damn thing and it would just poof, you know it's fast you know um, we used to actually take our entire system folder and copy that into the RAM drive and reboot the computer as the RAM drive being the boot drive okay and poof, the computer would just like instantly fire up it was like freaking cool but we don't have those features anymore since OS 10 came around and now we're up to like 14 Sonoma now 
Mac OS Sonoma to the desktop, just to fire up your computer first thing in the morning, to the desktop is five and a half gigs of RAM, okay? So, <clears throat> Windows 11, the latest updates and feature releases and all that crap combined, nine gigs worth of RAM. So you don't have 16 gigs of RAM. You have 16 in your computer, but you don't have 16 gigs for the program. That's the problem. So everything's gonna be running virtual, which is gonna slow that game down. Now, PCs or Windows computers do take a very much harder hit in performance when accessing swap, whether by SSD or by hard drive. They take a big hit in performance on the computer and it really slugs you down. And you're like, I just spent thousands of dollars on this and it's so freaking slow. Why? Because you didn't have enough RAM in the computer. You need more RAM, okay? So it's not necessarily that you need a faster SSD drive, but you definitely need some more RAM. Now, RAM also works in other ways other than just in virtual memory for swap. It also works to be used as video RAM. Now, in the Macintosh platform world that we're in now with ARM architecture of Apple Silicon, okay, um, our CPU, our GPU, all that jazz, all shares RAM. Okay, there's no separate GPU RAM for our GPU. It takes it from system RAM. So if we have eight gigs of RAM in our computer, okay, the OS uses five and a half gigs. Now that includes any video RAM required, etc., and for the operating system to launch and get you to the desktop with all your crap, that's five and a half gigs gone. Okay, now if you want to run a program, Okay, and that program, let's say it needs, I don't know, five gigs of RAM, but you only got eight in your computer. Well, you don't have five gigs. Oh, but I got eight gigs. So I can run a game that run, wants five gigs, or I can run a program that wants five gigs. Well, yeah, but you're going to be into virtual memory because by the time you take away from all that, as an example, okay, I'm going to fire up my activity monitor. I'm actually using my Mac with QuickTime. Um, and my phone is a continuity camera to shoot this video. So between my operating system and QuickTime to do the video and record this video, okay, I'm using a grand total of 7.21 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, now if all you have is eight gigs of RAM in your computer, you're perfectly fine. You're not hitting swap yet. Now let's fire up something like Google Chrome. Okay. And it's going to launch three tabs for me. Okay. Now with that, I'm now at 8.76 gigs of RAM in use. So I'm over 8 gigs, which means if I only have 8 gigs of RAM, well, guess what? <laughs> I'm already into swap. And all I did was launch my damn browser and I'm into swap. And now I'm taking a performance hit. Now I may end up with freezes or lockups on my video that I'm trying to shoot. Okay, because I am in swap and swap does take a performance hit. Though very minor on a Mac compared to a Windows computer, it is still a hit nonetheless. Now, I have personally watched a video myself on YouTube where uh, the guy took two MacBook Air uh, M2s, one with 8 gigs of RAM and one with 16 gigs of RAM. Okay, both run the exact same operating system. They both have the exact same SSDs in them. So everything is fair. The only difference is the RAM. And the RAM speeds are the same because, well, they are. It's unified memory. And they're the same computer. They use the same unified memory. Okay? You could plainly see how much of a hit that that MacBook Air took that had 8 gigs of RAM, where the one with 16 was perfectly fine. Okay? So this is the difference between going into swap and not going into swap. Okay? So... Yeah, you're going to get the better performance with more RAM. RAM doesn't technically make your computer go actually faster. Okay, it does help with, you know, performance, yes, because in a sense, so I guess you could say it does kind of make it a little faster because it actually has all the available RAM it needs for the OS. It's going to have available RAM for your programs because you have lots of RAM in there. But if you don't have enough RAM in your computer, you're screwed. Kind of like Windows 11. Windows 11 uses 9 gigs of RAM currently. Okay. Now, that's to the desktop. Okay. That's it. 
So that's just the operating system. You haven't even fired anything up yet. But if you only have eight gigabytes of RAM, you're already in to swap for one gigabyte worth of RAM, right? So then any programs you run are all in, all in virtual memory, which is gonna dramatically slow down your computer and it's gonna cause performance issues. It's gonna cause stuttering. It's gonna cause crappy gameplay. Okay, now if you have 16 gigs of RAM in your computer, where mine was when I bought it new, and you have a game, for example, that wants 16 gigs of RAM just for the application to fire up, not including any of your settings, because it's going to go to its own defaults. So on its own default settings, okay, which is likely going to be like low to medium settings, depending on what it sees in your computer, okay, it's going to use 16 gigs of RAM. But I only have 16 gigs of RAM, so I got lots of RAM. No, you don't because your OS choose nine. Nine from 16, <laughs> okay, is six, okay? So you are, no, sorry, it's seven. So nine from 16 is seven gigs of RAM, but the game wants 16. Well, then you best give it the other nine gigs. I can't, I don't have it. Well, then you got a crappy computer for playing a video game on because it's not gonna run properly, okay? And there's a difference between running a game in its minimum spec line and its recommended, okay? You don't even have the recommended RAM, okay? You might have even the recommended video card, which is eight gigs for Cyberpunk 2077 for the first release version. But if you don't have the available RAM for that game, it's free RAM, okay? And it's gonna use more RAM depending on the resolution you're gonna play it in and depending on what other settings you do above quick presets for you know low, medium, high, and ultra high, okay? There are other settings you can access other than you know the quickie defaults, right? Okay, those are gonna use up more RAM than 16 gigs. But the program in its own presets and whatever preset it loads is using 16 gigs. So you need more. So when I took my, my my PC at 16 gigs of RAM, that game did not run very well. At 32 gigs of RAM, it ran much better. At 64 gigabytes of RAM, okay, it runs even better yet because now I have all kinds of free RAM for the, for the program. Windows has all this RAM. I'm not going anywhere near swap. And oh yeah, I do have one problem with my PC. It has a four gig NVIDIA graphic card in it with its own four gigs of RAM, which is my preferred video card, which I told Windows, don't use the built-in Intel crap. I wanna use the NVIDIA. Well, my NVIDIA card is now taking four gigs of system RAM on top of, so now I'm at 20 gigs of RAM for the game, okay? Plus my OS at another nine gigs, etc. We're up around 29 gigs of RAM here, okay? So, and then I can play the game, but one little problem. Why am I lacking an FPS still? I'm only getting 70s, right? I want to get to that 100. Well, I need an eight gig video card. I only have a four gig and it's going to take four gigs of my system RAM to add with that card because all PCs do it anyways, okay? They take system RAM when they need it for video power, okay? But my RAM is 3200 megahertz. My video RAM is much faster. So it slows down my card's video RAM to match with it so that it doesn't crap out on me. Okay, so I don't get a system error in the game or a blue screen of death or freeze ups. Okay, so that makes the game perform lesser. So now I get less FPS. Okay, and I'm stuck right now at medium graphics, 1080p resolution. And I'm not a real fan of 1080p. I prefer higher resolution. But when I try and chalk up my resolution on medium graphics and I go to even 2K, which is much more appealing, well, now I'm down to like 50s on my FPS because I'm chewing up more in order to get more resolution, okay? And it's kind of like, well, that's kind of the way it works, right? So, <coughs> no matter what you've been told or been led to believe, when it comes to RAM, don't look at the specifications so much of the program in itself that you're looking at. Every program will use a certain amount of RAM until you start utilizing that program, okay? Even iMovie uses under 200 megabytes of RAM to fire up, but it can use up gigabytes worth of RAM 
to do your edit, editing of your video depending if you're doing 720, 1080, uh, 4K, or above footage, okay? And the higher the resolution footage you use too, the more RAM is gonna be required with the program to actually deal with that. And the more power from your computer is gonna need to deal with it too, okay? Which can cause some lagging and stuff. That's why if you're gonna do any kind of video editing beyond 4K, you better have a pretty honking Mac or even, even a really honking PC when you're doing that kind of resolution, okay? And it's the, not just the resolution, it's the file type codecs you're working with too. Your program needs to support those codecs, okay? So that might mean that instead of running, say, iMovie, for example, or even DaVinci Resolve on the Mac or the PC, because it is on both platforms, okay? You might need to go to something even more radical to start doing your 8K footage or your 12K footage, which I think is actually a waste, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, so hopefully this helps you to understand that, yes, RAM does affect performance, so it kind of does affect the speed of your computer. Now, the speed of the RAM, of course, has very little influence, but some influence. On some games, yes, you will benefit with a bit more FPS with faster RAM, but you're gonna see your biggest benefit with the amount of RAM in your computer, more so the speed of the RAM. But you do need to have the at least the base speed of what your computer supports. Now, my computer came with 2400 megahertz RAM and I'm running 3200 megahertz RAM in it. It does actually affect FPS, which is noticeable in that huge of a gap. It's a couple of FPS, but hey, every couple helps, right? Now, there is RAM I can run beyond 32 gigahertz uh, or 3200 megahertz in my computer. Yes, it's not a big deal, right? So, but that's my computer. Not every computer can do that, okay? Some can, some can't. Some are just prefixed. This is the only speed you can use, which is fine. Don't worry about the speed as much as you need to worry about things like your CPU, your GPU, and of course your available RAM. And the biggest thing here is your available RAM because that available RAM needs to be there so you can avoid going into swap because anytime you hit swap, you're gonna be in a performance hit area, okay? So if you wanna do the whole 2024 thing, for the more basic to middle of the road people on a Mac, 16 gigs will still get you through at least until the end of this year. I have no idea what the new OS is gonna need, but it'll definitely get you through to there with 16 gigs of RAM, okay? 32, 64, 128 might be your better options depending on what kind of user you are. 32 should do pretty much everybody right now that's in even my level of you know low to mid-level stuff, okay? High-end video editors, they need 64 or 128 or more RAM, okay? That's kind of the way it works. PC users, you need as much RAM as you can get, baby, because if you want to play games, play them properly, avoid swap and all that, you're going to need a bare spanking minimum, bare minimum of 32 gigs of RAM if you're playing games on a Windows computer, okay? Now I'm talking half decent to AAA titles. Cheesy little pathetic games that doesn't really matter all that much, but don't buy anything with 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. And if you do buy something with 16 gigs of RAM, make sure that RAM is upgradable to at least 32 to 64 gigs of RAM um, so that you can actually benefit in the long haul because Windows 12 is going to be coming out probably this year too. God knows how much RAM it's going to want, but right now 11's at 9 gigs. So you do need to have technically 32 gigs or more RAM right now, okay? So even for some of your mid-level games, you should have at least 32 gigs of RAM at the very minimal in your computer because 16 is a pathetic joke. No matter what channels tell you what, they are wrong, okay? If you only have 16 gigs of RAM in your computer, you are doing very pathetic. You are running your machine a lot hotter because you're making it work harder too with less RAM too. That's the other problem with lesser RAM and only 16 gigs of RAM for gaming is a joke, okay? Games do actually utilize a lot of RAM. A lot of those games do. And the games that people are playing, yeah, you should be having at least 32 gigs of RAM in your computer at the bare minimal, okay? Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm here to be a straight shooter and tell you how it is and from my own experiences and I work with black, both platforms on a daily basis. 
Okay, so I, I know what happens with both of them here, okay? And I'm not no beer commercial for you guys. I'm going to tell you how it is, so like it or not. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Ciao.